welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are breaking into fall. Yes, you guys heard me right. I am dabbling in a bit of fall today. And honestly, I can't wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, I took a poll over on Facebook and asked my viewers, would they want to see just fall or a bit of Halloween? And I got a mixed bag. So today we are diving into Halloween and some fall. Uh, for the first three projects, I am using the Halloween Master Board from Roy Cycled. It is from the new release and I recently thrifted these three bottles and I found some tags. So we are gonna make these cute little tags using the Halloween Master Board and I love it when Royce creates papers like this because it creates so many opportunities for you guys to create. For starters, I am going to paint just one side of the tags white and I like to do this because it really makes your papers pop. I think there's a time and a place for that. I have been dabbling around without painting the background white and I'm loving both looks but for this one, I really want the tags to pop. Now the tags are dry, I am just trying to figure out what images I want on each tag. I like the look of the skeleton. There was also a skeleton head that I thought was kind of fun and a little potion bottle. So I cut those out and then we're ready to start decoupaging. It is so easy when you're working with something so tiny. I laid down liquid patina, which is by far my favorite uh, medium to use with a recycled paper, and then just took my finger and worked out all the wrinkles. After I let those dry for a bit, I then took a 220 sandpaper and it's just a really lightweight sandpaper and then in a downward motion, I removed all the excess paper and the tags turned out absolutely perfect. After that, I just took a pen and popped the hole open and then they are ready to hang on these bottles. I was just going to hang the tag from the bottle, I then decided it needed a little something something. So I pick up this twine at Walmart, it's just a really nice chunky twine, and I wrapped it around um, until there was no, where it could not move up and down, and then I tied it. After that, I took the, um, with the tags, there was a little bit of twine that came with each tag, and I used that twine, and I fed it through, and then I tied that, and then I unraveled the original twine on each of the end just to give it a little bit of, uh, you know, just some dimension. For project two, I recently thrifted this metal container. It was super cool looking and I really, what caught my eye is I really liked that gold. I also liked the images and as I was looking it over though, I realized there was not a lot I was going to be able to work with when it came to the images or that gold. So I decided to use the uh, Halloween Master Board on this. For starters, I took, I really liked this image where it said 31 and it had the bird sitting on there. 
So I am going to put that image right in the center and I really want that to pop. So I'm painting that image white and I'm just using White Swan from DIY Paint. All the products that I'm using in today's video, you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. Now that it's dry and I traced out exactly what I wanted in that image, I'm just taking my scissors and cutting it out. I always like to have a little bit of an overhang, that way I can take that sandpaper and sand off the excess and get a really nice clean finish. Now it's time to decoupage though, so I'm just doing a starter strip where I apply a really nice even layer of liquid patina, and that is really key. You don't want that super thick or to have a lot of uh, lines in your liquid patina or in your decoupage medium. You want it to be really nice and smooth. I then lay down my paper and I use my paintbrush to smooth out all the wrinkles. And then I start working my way down and again I apply another nice even coat of the liquid patina, you know, lay down that paper, smooth it out and continue to work my way down until it's completely on. The key here is you do want your paper to be completely dry before you start sanding. And sometimes uh, when I have multiple projects going on and I'm getting ready for a video, I get a little impatient. Do not do what I do because it actually tore a little bit here because it was not fully dry. So just make sure it is completely dry. And once it is, then in a downward motion, you can get rid of the excess paper. I decided to paint the entire case Little Black Dress. And I did two coats of paint uh, because it separated in some areas. I think I went a little too heavy. So when I started to wet distress it, it took a little bit more elbow grease to get this distressing to come through. I wanted a bit of that gold to be popping through uh, from underneath. I was hoping even to have some of the, like the texture images underneath. Uh, I, I do like how it turned out. I just think that I put on too much li little black dress. And if you have worked with DIY paint before, you'll know that it's heavily pigmented. So typically you don't need two coats. It's more like one coat and a couple touch-ups. This project was honestly ever-changing, you guys. Initially, I was just going to distress it, just put that piece of paper on top. Then I decided to add some paper on each side, add an image on the front, and it was definitely a work in progress. Uh, I just, I don't know if I wasn't feeling it or what, but it, like I said, it just kept changing, and I really do love how this turned out in the end. I think it's really unique and I think someone who is a big Halloween lover will absolutely love displaying this for Halloween. For project three, I recently thrifted this little crate. I think I ended up paying possibly $1.99 or $2.99 for it. And I had a bit of paper left over from the Halloween masterboard. And I thought it would be perfect just to have a scene on one side of it. And then if I could find some little bottles to go in here, I thought it would be perfect. So for starters, I just um, took my finger and kind of rubbed around the entire perimeter and figured out exactly where I needed to cut to lay this paper down. 
Next, I just started to apply the liquid patina. And again, I always do a starter strip and then work my way from one side of the project to the other. And this has been by far the easiest way that I've been able to manage wrinkles and my projects come out absolutely beautiful. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm like, as I was looking at the paper and the color of the crate, I was like, oh, maybe I need to do something different. Maybe I need to change the color, paint it black, do something. And then I set this project aside because I felt like the white was too bright for the paper. After it dried, I took my sandpaper and I sanded away the excess paper. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm still feeling like it is just too bright. I almost felt like it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. So I started to brainstorm and I, that is when I determined I was going to use a little bit of dark wax and clear wax to distress the rest of it and make it look just as aged as the paper. Here I'm using DIY's dark wax and clear wax. I'm applying a bit of the dark wax and then applying a little bit of the clear and it helps you uh, manage that dark wax and spread it out a little bit more. If you have too much dark wax in a specific area, you can apply a little bit more of the clear and then wipe it away. It just gives you better control. And I'm doing that on the outside and the inside. And I really think that this finishes off this entire little crate. Uh, and it was a simple flip. For project four, you guys, I don't know why I love these old coffee pots as much as I do, but anytime I'm out thrifting, I always grab them. Now, this is called Heirloom Pumpkins, and it is from the new Roy Cycled Decoupage Paper Release, and I love it. And I used the stacked pumpkins on another release or on another project that I did. Uh, but I haven't had the opportunity yet to use the heirloom pumpkins. So for starters, what I'm doing here is flipping it over. And because I'm going to apply this on the coffee pot, I do need to paint the back. And so I did see both Royce and Lexi do this, paint the backside. And in the past, I've always cut the um, image out and then painted it. Well, I saw one of them just paint the back of the paper. I'm like, brilliant. That way I'm not having to put it onto plastic and all of that. So what I'm doing here is painting the back of the images that I want to use on the coffee pot. Now the images are completely dry. I'm flipping it back over. I'm taking the scissors and I am going to then cut out all the images that I want to use on the pot. Now that I have all my images cut out, I am going to lay out where I want my images placed and then we're going to start decoupaging. And I, again, just like I always do, I start on one end of it and I work my way down. Now, anytime you're using or you're working with a surface that is not completely flat, sometimes what you're gonna find is that uh, the paper buckles a little bit, so you'll have to like lift it up a little bit, maneuver it, try to be really careful with your paper because it is a tissue type paper and it could possibly tear. And I just worked with this until I ended up getting the whole entire piece of paper completely flat. And then I um, did one even coat of liquid patina over the entire piece. 
I then started to apply the flowers on the bottom. And that's the other nice thing too, by having the images with that white backing, you can layer your decoupage papers just like you can with the IOD transfers. I have all the images cut out and now it's time to play around with layering and actually placing them. And I start off by just trying to figure out how I want the images. And then I start taking the decoupage medium liquid patina and start laying a little bit of liquid patina laying the image and I just start layering and stacking it. And I absolutely love how this turned out guys. For my fifth and final project, I recently thrifted these three pumpkins and I probably could have displayed them as is, but I wanted to give them a complete transformation. I pulled out all my IOD molds, uh, my tight bond, my air dry clay, and don't forget the cornstarch, and we are going to do a complete transformation. I want each of the pumpkins to look completely different, so I am using different molds on each pumpkin. For starters, you do want cornstarch in your molds. It just helps release the clay that much easier. I use the cornstarch and I use gravity to help me get the molds out. So I'm grabbing a chunk of the air dry clay from IOD and the first mold here I'm using is called Olive Crust. I'm going to take my mold and I am going to dump out any excess cornstarch and then I'm going to start filling in the mold and I basically use my thumb and I take away any of the excess. I love the IOD molds because it does have a micro rim edge and it really helps you get a nice smooth back surface and as I mentioned I always love using gravity to help with getting that mold out so for this first pumpkin I am using both the olive crust mold and I'm also using the mold called classic elements and again I want each of these pumpkins to look a little different so I'm using different molds for each pumpkin after I lay out all the molds exactly how I want them, I'm then using Type Bond, and that is by far my favorite glue to use with the molds and the air dry clay. And I am applying just a little in the center, and then I'm taking my finger and I'm spreading it out to the edges. The key here is you don't want too much uh, glue on there because when you lay your mold down, you don't want it to see out because it just causes a bigger mess that you have to clean up. If you just start off with a smaller amount of glue, it would be better than having too much. Uh, after I completely apply the glue, I lay it down and then what I recommend doing here is from the center to the edges, just lightly start applying pressure to make sure that it gets really nice and adhered and then you want to make sure that around the entire edges that it's completely down and I keep on working my way around the entire uh, pumpkin with all of the molds and once I have them all placed I just set it aside and I do let it dry overnight for the second pumpkin, I am using the molds called Fleur de Lis, and I'm using the leaves out of that one. And then I'm also using the new uh, mold called Dainty Flourishes. And it had the cutest little molds in there with, it just reminded me of um, how a pumpkin has those little curly cues. Uh, so I decided to use that. 
Initially, I laid out all of the leaves, and then from there is when I started adding the dainty flourishes. And I love how this one came together and looks completely different than the first one. For the third pumpkin, I am using Olive Crest, and I am also using the leaves from Florida Lee to decorate up this one. I let these dry overnight, and here is what they look like, guys. I think they are super cute, but now it's time to add a bit of color to completely finish this transformation. So for the first pumpkin, I am using the Perfectionist Paintbrush from DIY. If you guys have not had the opportunity to try this out, you are missing out. I love that pointed tip and really it gets into all the details of your project. So it definitely was the perfect brush for this uh, project because the molds have so much detail and it really allowed me to get in there and get that paint in there. Now this one I decided to paint faded burlap. I my actually inspiration was from the heirloom recycled paper and how it started off with the stacked um, on the bottom it reminded me of faded burlap and then gypsy green and then summer crush so that is what I decided to do here and I'm applying an even coat of faded burlap over the entire piece I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna tackle the next one on to the next one. So I'm breaking out Gypsy Green from DIY Paint, and I really think this was the perfect green for this pumpkin. And like I said earlier, my inspiration came from the recycled paper, uh, which was the heirloom pumpkins or the stacked pumpkins, and the green basically was the same. For our third pumpkin, I'm using Summer Crush, and I know many of you might be saying, well, it is already orange, but it's not Summer Crush, and I also want to paint the leaves the same color. So I am applying, again, one even coat of Summer Crush, letting it dry, and then we're going to do the next step. Here are all three pumpkins completely painted and dried. I love them, you guys. I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and they're not even finished yet. What do you guys think so far? The next step here, I'm taking DIY's Big Top, which is a sealer. Anytime you use DIY paint, you do need to seal it, and I'm using Big Top. So I'm applying one even coat to all three pumpkins. I'm going to let them dry very thoroughly, and then we're gonna add a bit of wax. I let them dry very thoroughly, and now we're adding dark wax and the Golden Rule Gilding Wax from DIY to bring out all the details. For starters, I'm applying just the dark wax lightly over all the leaves and then in the crevices to really emphasize the texture of the pumpkin. I'm then wiping away the excess and again just touching up those crevices to really make that pop. Then I'm taking the gold or the golden rule, it's like a gilding wax, and I'm brushing it over the tops of each of the leaves and all that detail and it just really ties this all together and I absolutely love the way this one turned out. Next we're going to tackle the gypsy green and I'm going to do the exact same thing just lightly apply the dark wax over all the leaves and around the leaves and then again working in each of the crevices of the pumpkin to really bring out all that detail wiping away the excess of the dark wax and then bringing in the gilding wax uh, or the golden rule again which is the gilding wax and lightly touch over all the detail and this one turned out absolutely amazing too 
for the third pumpkin i'm doing the exact same thing with the dark wax with the golden rule here though i am making sure that i don't get any of that golden rule in the center of that front piece i just want to make sure that if i ever want to add something to it i'm able to do that and if i had the wax on the front there it um, may not allow me to stamp an image or apply a decoupage piece of paper because of the wax didn't love these pumpkins oh my oh my is all I have to say I'm actually you guys I do say sometimes quite often that I'm going to keep these but I really am tempted to keep them they are absolutely my favorite out of today's flips um, I had so much fun working with the different items you guys know how much I love to thrift and take those items and give them new life. And I love using all the products that you can find out on my website. So like the IOD molds, the uh, recycled paper, uh, the paints, all that just helps me transform all these thrift store finds into amazing treasures. So, all right, this weekend I am going to be organizing like crazy, you guys. I feel like I have been thrifting a lot and I need to kind of take a few hours and just really organize my stash. <laughs> it has become out of control and I have some ideas, but I just am going to tackle it on Saturday because we're supposed to have a nice day. Sunday, it's supposed to rain, so I plan on then working on my Monday video. Not entirely sure yet what you guys are going to get. Probably some thrift flips. Um, tell me in the comments, did you guys like fall or too early? I did a poll over on Facebook and they said now fall, fall, fall. So I dove right in and I did a little Halloween, a little fall. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have yourselves a great weekend. We will see you all Monday. Bye.